okay hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to my another all new video on cystic fibrosis as I discussed on my Facebook page but I'm 24 hours late in uploading it anyhow so welcome to my video on cystic fibrosis here in this video I will discuss with you all the important features and points that are commonly used by the USMLE to test you on CF and what are the things you will encounter in a vignette that will help you identify it's a case of CF so let's begin with the video I have done some animations this time okay so cystic fibrosis it's uh, a disease of CFTR it's a chloride channel protein that is present in the apical membranes of the cells and this protein is defective in cystic fibrosis so we'll discuss all the features one by one but I'll most importantly like to discuss with you some important points that you would see in a vignette that will help you straight away in just one click of a second identify that it's a question on CF so first of all I've written this line called Caucasian boy with a running nose so Caucasian every question on cystic fibrosis will be about a Caucasian boy a young boy 8 10 or maybe 12 years old and he a young boy with a history of recurrent sinopulmonary infections sinusitis um, pneumonia pseudomonas infections uh, bilateral lobar pneumonia any kind of respiratory infections again and again and again and again and uh, it would be in a caucasian boy S uh, although it's an autosomal recessive mutation but I don't know why there are no questions on girls I've seen maybe there's a fact that I don't know but most of all you'll see a Caucasian boy with recurrent sinopulmonary infections so I've uh, made the slide okay look for this you see a Caucasian young male with recurrent sinusitis or recurrent respiratory infections and absence of vast difference in an uh, adult or adolescent male with azoospermia secondly and thirdly you see malabsorption and stetoria symptoms that are due to pancreatic insufficiency in these patients or you see dehydration after some literal exercise that went below the slide I guess I'll put in the annotation so four things that you will see in a vignette and you can straight away think it's CF is a young male boy of Caucasian descent who has a history of recurrent respiratory infections who is azoospermic three who is having symptoms of malabsorption and four who gets dehydrated and loses electrolytes after even a little exercise or a little playing outside so these are the four things you see in any vignette you straight away go for CF until there is something else also so another one more thing I would like to tell you so that you can identify CF and some other questions also it will help you in USMLA there are some questions that are straight away given in the first line of the question through just giving the race ethnicity or you know geographical location <coughs> of the patient so like CF is almost every question will be related to a Caucasian young male so CF will be almost always with a Caucasian young male and similarly uh, if there's a question on sarcoidosis you will see an African American girl or an African American female very common in those if they give that and if you see a girl a g they are telling you about an athlete or a football player or a weightlifter uh, someone who is involved in all physical activity kind of thing maybe they are pointing to anabolic steroid use and if there's a question on uh, like uh, someone recently traveled to South Asia and Africa they're pointing toward tuberculosis and there are many these kind of questions like some lakes they will tell you which are commonly related to some specific fungus so there are some questions on Emily that are straightway related to this ethnicity or geographical areas African American female sarcoidosis and South Asia travel history or African travel history uh, tuberculosis and Caucasian male cystic fibrosis so that was just off the track thing let's get back to the main thing cystic fibrosis okay, just okay. yeah 
let's pathophysiology what is it and how does it happen so in normal people like you and me if you don't have CFTR there's uh, this CFTR protein this normal CFTR protein is formed and it is processed in the cytoplasm post translational processing as you know and then it is transported to the apical membranes where it uh, is incorporated in the plasma membrane and the function of CFTR is to uh, expel these chloride ions from inside the cell to outside and this expulsion of chloride ions also drives the expulsion of sodium ions in water from the cell and this specific activity is very important in areas where there is continuous secretion of <coughs> enzymes or uh, mucus secretion like in respiratory tract, respiratory mucosa it helps in mucociliary clearance and through excretion of water and sodium and chloride and in pancreatic ducts helps in uh, secretion of enzymes in biliary ducts it helps in secretion of bile and so all these places it is a useful thing to have C CFTR protein in the plasma membrane because it will cause expulsion of chloride ions and subsequently uh, take sodium and water with it so what happens what's wrong in this uh, particular disease okay in CFTR there is <coughs> a problem on chromosome 7 what happens is there is the CFTR protein is a long long uh, polypeptide and what happens is there is deletion there is deletion of three nucleotides from the gene which leads to loss of phenyl aniline from the position 508 on this protein so three as we know three uh, nucleotides lead uh, form one amino acid so deletion of three nucleotides will lead to loss of phenylalanine at position 508 on chromosome 7 so what happens okay there's deletion of phenylalanine from position 508 that leads to formation of an abnormal CFTR protein this abnormal CFTR protein it cannot fold properly the, there is not no proper post translational uh, modification so <coughs> what happens is there is a lack of proper folding and glycosylation of this new protein which leads to its degradation in the cytoplasm so there is degradation of CFTR this abnormal CFTR and this abnormal CFTR cannot reach the apical membrane and it's degraded in the cytoplasm itself so there is no CFTR so what happens because of that yeah there is no uh, expulsion of chloride ions which also stops the expulsion of sodium ions and water so there are very dry and viscous secretions in these areas there is dry respiratory mucosa and obviously that would stop the mucociliary clearance and if there is no mucociliary clearance obviously the bacteria and other pathogens cannot be expelled and that leads to recurrent sinopulmonary infections like sinusitis and all sorts of respiratory infections and in pancreas there is uh, no secretion of pancreatic enzymes and it leads to plugging of the ducts even and that will obviously cause symptoms of pancreatic insufficiency like uh, there's malabsorption, there's tutoria and there is failure of to thrive in neonates and there could be weight loss all sorts of symptoms due to pancreatic insufficiency next is uh, uh, just a minute yeah so I was telling you how uh, things happen in this and also in CFTR there is absence of uh, vas deferens that I'll come later one thing I would like to tell you is that in almost every place CFTR's function is to expel chloride out of the cell and consequently drive the expulsion of sodium and water but in the acrine sweat glands in sweat glands these arrows just turn 180 degree in sweat glands what it does is it absorbs chloride ions and also drives the absorption of sodium and water and that's, that helps to uh, maintain the electrolyte balance and uh, prevent loss of excessive electrolytes from the body during sweating <coughs> so in all the body parts like pancreas and respiratory mucosa 
due to absence of CFTR there is dry, there is dryness of the secretions because water cannot be expelled sodium cannot be expel expelled chloride cannot be but in the sweat glands there is opposite it cannot be absorbed that leads to excessive loss of chloride and sodium and water and causes symptoms accordingly so let's go to the next slide diagnosis so on the USMLE you will find only these three types of uh, the three points on vignettes that will straight away help you identify that this is CF first and most commonly tested is sweat chloride test <coughs> so what is this sweat chloride test is that as I told you because there is uh, no absorption of chloride and sodium ions from the sweat the, there is excessive loss of chloride in the sweat so sweat chloride is increased it is more than 60 millimoles per liter so this is the most uh, important diagnostic test that helps you identify CF it is increased sweat chloride next is increased nasal trans epithelial potential difference because see in nasal epithelium there is a potential difference between the epithelial fluid and the interstitial fluid and if CFTR is absent and you know obviously sodium ions can also not uh, go out of the cell so there is decreased sodium ion content in the epithelial surface epithelial fluid and that leads to increased potential difference between the epithelial fluid and the interstitial fluid and that is called increased nasal transepithelial potential difference and the third point that helps you identify is that there is absence of vast difference in these individuals which manifests as azoospermia also uh, so these are the three points that you will find in most almost every vignette that is on CF so if you see any of these three things just go for CF absence of vast difference increment of nasal transepithelial PD and most important most common sweat chloride test helps you identify CF confirm CF and I would like to tell you that in the acrine gl sweat glands the sweat that is initially formed is isotonic with the plasma so isotonic fluid is excreted and uh, secreted and as it passes through the ducts the CFTR channels absorb all the chloride and sodium and water with it so obviously in CA cystic fibrosis this does not happen and you lose all the sweat chloride and sodium and water and that leads to electrolyte disturbance <coughs> so let's see the next slide signs and symptoms okay I've made this mnemonic PVR because all the symptoms are basically manifestations of PVR PVR is a very famous cinema chain in India so PVR pancreatic insufficiency obviously as I told you the there is no proper uh, secretion of water and chloride ions and uh, all that stuff so there are dry secretions and uh, there is plugging of these uh, pancreatic ducts so uh, pancreatic enzymes do not reach the intestine bottom line so what will happen uh, no pancreatic lipase no pancreatic enzymes and all so first of all there is malabsorption obviously there is loss of fat in the stools stetoria then there is failure to thrive in young kids neonates and there will be weight loss and almost everything related to pancreatic insufficiency secondly I'll, I'll try to put an annotation or a link in the description to show you a photograph that will help you remember all the signs and symptoms but anyhow so first is this pancreatic insufficiency in CF second is vast difference is absent as I told you and third is the bottom line Caucasian male with a running nose as I said respiratory or sinopulmonary infections so in this in any minute you will see a Caucasian guy a young male and that will give you a history of recurrent respiratory infections two three episodes every year or a sibling who died of severe respiratory infection uh, you'll just you can just think of CF also I'd like to say that most common organism in CF is Pseudomonas aeruginosa this is also commonly tested so PVR pancreatic insufficiency vast difference absent and recurrent sinopulmonary respiratory infections 
this mnemonic i read somewhere cf pancreas uh, i don't completely remember the full form but i'll just put it in uh, the annotation uh, c is i think probably for chronic respiratory infections failure to thrive pancreatic insufficiency uh, azoospermia i guess then uh, c could be anything rectal yeah rectal prolapse yeah that is also common in these patients then EA I don't remember S for as for pseudomonas aeruginosa and salty sweat I remember this much only of this but I'll put an annotation okay treatment treatment is like pulmonary therapy you can do postural drainage of the secretions to remove the secretions increase mucociliary clearance you can use mucolytics and you could use pancreatic enzymes to overcome pancreatic insufficiency and basically are these three and these days they're trying gene therapy to using a retroviral agent to incorporate the cftr gene in the uh, abnormal mucosal epithelium so treatment is not commonly asked mostly you'll be asked on these topics you'll have a winner that will uh, show you signs and symptoms of uh, weight loss small absorption or azoospermia or recurrent respiratory infections or they will give you that a patient is having recurrent infections and his sibling died of severe respiratory infection and these will be the most commonly the clinical findings they will give you in any vignette or that will lead you to CF or they will give that the sweat chloride test is positive or there is increase in nasal transepithelial PD and the these are the five four or five things that will be seen in the vignette so let's go to the bottom line the things that you should know uh, you see these things in any vignette just go for CF yeah again these these are the things you see these things in a vignette you go for CF and these are right recurrent sinusitis recurrent infections of the respiratory system the absence of vast deference azoospermia you see malabsorption and cytorrhea and you see a kid who gets dehydrated very soon after playing with his uh, other friends and other kids he gets dehydrated because i told you uh, this kid if he goes out to play any game or do s does some light exercise he will lose excess of s sweat chloride sodium and all that and get dehydrated so <coughs> so guys this was almost it about uh, cystic fibrosis these are the important points that you must uh, keep in mind and these are the points that will help you uh, identify any vignet on cf and solve all the questions on cf remember these four or five points and you are good to go with any question on CF. So I hope you found this small presentation on cystic fibrosis useful and this will help you uh, identify and answer all questions on CF and this was almost about it and if you like this video or if you found it useful then don't forget to rate comment and give me a thumbs up below this video by clicking the like button and if you're new to my channel and if you want to stay connected with all the new coming videos which I will post in times to come then do not forget to click the subscribe button below the, the subscribe button you see below this video or you can also subscribe by clicking on this big subscribe button on the screen I'm showing now and also you can stay connected with all the updates news information and all the stuff I share about the USMLE by clicking like on my Facebook page and following my Facebook page the description for <coughs> and the link to that page is in the information given below this video so you can find the link to my Facebook page there and I hope this video was good for you and anyhow I'll see you next time in an all new video on an all new topic if you want to suggest a topic that I should make a video on then r do write that in the comment section below Otherwise, I'll see you next time with a new video. Till then, all of you have a great day, great time. See you next time. Goodbye. Have a nice day.